Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e and our special guest this afternoon, Nate Hicks, an opportunity to talk about a very important subject, essentially money and politics. Welcome, Nate. It's good to have you. We uh, I had a chance to meet you over the weekend, and I was... Uh, very impressed with your uh, with your commitment to this okay. issue. So I understand that. Well, first of all, there's so much we, we need to get into. First of all, just to establish what the lawyers call the foundation. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself, and from there, uh, you know, you had a press conference this morning. Tell us a little bit about that. But first, tell how how are you involved? What got you involved with the idea of money, politics, uh, just activism? You know, because obviously you're a citizen activist, a political activist. So, how, what's your journey? Hey, well, well, thanks first of all for having me. I really do appreciate the opportunity. Uh, and what got me involved? Uh, you know, I've lived in Hawaii nine years now, and. Uh, you know, I've been working on the minimum wage campaign for the previous four years. And so that was a really important uh, fight. I thought, you know, we're living in Hawaii, extremely expensive place to live. And we had the lowest minimum wage of all of the blue states. Um, it was just a travesty, especially in a state that has the highest number of Democrats in office. It just didn't make any sense. And so I really felt pushed and driven to make that a priority. Uh, you know, I'm definitely reaping the benefits of all of the activists, activism that has come before me, right? Mm -hmm. The life I get to lead today in 2023 is way better than the life I would have had 100, 200, 300 years ago because of the work that people have put in. And I feel it's, you know, kind of my responsibility to make that same effort for those that are going to come after me as well. So um, that's probably got what me, that's what got me interested. Well, what, what do you do besides activism? I mean, what do you do besides, you know, talking about minimum wage and money and politics? And what's the, who, give us the Nate background. You know, like, <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm from Minnesota originally, um, and then uh, went to school in Iowa, Drake University, and then ended up coming up here in 20, or coming to Hawaii in 2013. Um, I used to be a, a teacher. I used to be a high school teacher. I taught math, science. Oh, see, uh, that, yeah. So you're a smart guy. You're one of the intellectuals in the in our community. <laughs> I, I pretend to be yeah. sometimes, but I, I can be pretty stupid sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't think so. So you had a you had a press conference this morning about uh, public financing of political campaigns, which is a real underlying topic we're, we're going to talk about. Today. So tell us a little bit about the press conference, who was there, uh, how did it go, you know, and, and the rest of it. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. So again, we're focusing on trying to clean up elections, trying to get money out of politics, trying to make sure that folks can run a campaign without being dependent upon private donors. That's kind of the goal. We want to make sure that they can have state funded campaigns. So if they get donations from their constituents, uh, small $5 donations from their constituents, the state will make sure that they, the candidates have enough money to run a robust competitive campaign. So today was the launch day, uh, myself and um, uh, Judiciary Chair uh, Senator Carl Rhodes was there, uh, Representative Janae Capella was there, we had uh, Sergio Acabila, the uh, U.S. representative candidate um, from last year, um, as well, along with uh, the new uh, Republican state senator, uh, Brenton Ava, was there in support, um, and also a representative from HAPA, uh, Nanea Lowe. So uh, we were there to launch the introduction of the bill, right? Senator Rhodes is going to be introducing a bill to bring about clean elections and uh, to bring about this program to give candidates uh, an opportunity to win without private money. And so, uh, yeah, we launched, we, you know, provided the public well, with good information and the press was there to, uh, you know, ask some questions as well. So, you know, uh, Hawaii has had a form of public financing for a number of years now. In fact, I remember one of my earlier campaigns, I think it was for the 10th governor, I actually, um, I actually took advantage of. 
uh, in, uh, in, at least for the primary election. Uh, and so what's, what's different about what you're trying to do? I mean, what, what's, so what causes your activism at this point? Yeah, so the current system is a partial public financing of elections. And so if you're a candidate and you get small dollar donations, I think anything under $100 maybe counts, uh, then the state will match that on a one-to-one -one basis, right? So if the candidate goes out and raises, let's just say $2,000 in small dollar donations, the state will come in and kick in another $2,000. Uh, the downside with this plan as it currently is in place is it caps how much money the state will chip in uh, and the cap that it will chip in is far lower than what's actually needed to win a campaign. That's why none of the current House or Senate members uh, participate in this program. They all receive all of their funds from purely private donors, right? They don't get any state funds at all. Um, if they were to limit themselves to the donation limits, uh, there'd be a pretty good chance that somebody else could come in and outspend them and win because in our elections, money talks and that's kind of the way it goes. Well, okay, so what does your bill do that uh, fixes that? Right, so it completely, it's a, it's a very different system, right? And so the way that it would work now, let's just say I'm a candidate and I'm running for House of Representatives, let's just say. So what I would do uh, is I would make sure I could go and get 100 um, donations from people that are in my district only, constituents that can vote for me. I would get 100 um, donations of $5 exactly, a $5 donation. And I would turn that into the campaign spending commission. And I would say, hey, I have gotten a sufficient number of local constituents that support me. Now I'm eligible and I can participate in the full publicly financed election program. And the state would turn around and they would give me, uh, I think the number is currently set at about $33,000, $36,000 to run my primary campaign, assuming I have a primary um opposition somebody an opponent i'm running against and then if so i this were... is uh, when you say uh, so this thirty six thousand dollars is for a house race a state, house. state house and i am i'm assuming because the district's larger for council members or for senate members or even for that matter for governor ten governor that the amounts would increase uh, as well. Exactly. Yeah. The amounts are set at a level that's competitive for the race. So for state house, it's 50,000. For state senator, it's 100,000. Uh, state uh, Honolulu City Council is a bit larger. But yeah, they're all the amount available is all sort of based on what historically has been a, a, a number that's needed to win. So it's an it's a way that people can actually compete. Um, and that is actually hopefully going to entice many of the current legislators to use this program instead of asking for private money. Well, one of the, one of the junkest things to do when you're in public life really is ask for money. So, uh, you know, it's not something that at least many of us never really enjoy, uh, but people do it because it seems to be necessary. So uh, have you gotten any feedback besides uh, Senator Rhodes? Uh, who I, I think you said he was introducing the bill or something. Yeah, Senator Rhodes will be introducing it. But yeah, fortunately, we've had a lot of uh, positive responses from the uh, House of other legislative members, both in the Senate and the House. So um, this is a popular idea. Um, hopefully we can gain enough support to get it passed. But um, at least for now, uh, the support is coming in. And um, a lot of people are saying what exactly what you said, like uh, it's unfortunate that the current system requires uh, them to raise private funds. Nobody wants to go around and uh, beg for money every other year. So this is, a, okay, so let me get the system. Basically, um, if I can get 500 people giving me relatively small donations, uh, do, do they actually give me cash or do they pledge or uh, I, uh, what, how does this all work? Just the mechanics. Of it. 
Yeah, so it's going to be, um, again, if you're in a house race, it'll be 100, 100 donations, um, but they could be in cash, it could be in check, you can go online and you could be able to put your credit card in, uh, but it'll make sure that, uh, again, you'd have to put all your um, important identifying information. So the Campaign Spending Commission could make sure you are a actual, rep- uh, you're actually a constituent in that district, right? So- I, I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, fascinated by that. But, you know, assuming we get these 100 people from my district and I'm going to run, do I automatically get the $36,000 or do I have to keep, or is there some kind of matching scheme that as I continue to raise money, I get more money? So I don't have to worry about fundraising anymore. I mean, once I once I meet the threshold, I get the dollars. And so that also has the, I guess, the, the, the objective of equalizing expenditures. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the nice thing is, you know, nobody wants their representative or their senator or their governor or whoever uh, to be in office simply because they had more money. That's not, nobody thinks that's a good idea. Everybody would like it if money played no part. And so uh, unfortunately it does, right? You do need money to win a campaign. Right. Uh, but yeah, if we had all of our ca- potential candidates to participate in this program, they would all have the same amount of funds, right? Once you hit that hundred threshold for a house seat, uh, you would then get the same pot of money as all of the other candidates in the race. There's no more matching or catching up or anything like that. How did you uh, how did you select the hundred dollars as the I mean the hundred donors as the threshold uh, qualifying number? So I mean, what, what's the you know? So both Connecticut and Maine have this program in place. They're using it already. It's very effective, very popular, and we tried to match up their existing systems to one that would fit our sort of. Uh, district sizes, right? Um, and so um, our, I think our house seats are a little bigger than Maine's. And so our threshold is a little higher as well, um, just to make it sort of roughly equal. So in Maine, and what's the other state? I'm sorry. In Connecticut, the, the system, the, it's 100% um, public finance. Like, I'm assuming that you can't is there an opt out in the bill? I mean, like, I don't want I don't want to raise money, uh, have public money. I want to go out and raise money. Uh, yeah. So, so this program is definitely an opt in program. You have to choose to participate in the program. Uh, it's not federally legal for us to block people from raising their own funds. Right. The Supreme Court has ruled time and again that money is free speech or whatever. And so if somebody wants to go and run their campaign as they always have, they are always able to do that. Uh, But this just gives uh, candidates the option to not have to go and beg uh, for private. So, so you won't, so there will be uh, people who will decide that I'm going to do it the uh, the old fashioned way, so to speak. And, And just, so what impact, well, I tell you what, we're going to, unfortunately, we need to take a break, but we're going to take a short break right now. And when we get back uh, in about a minute, uh, I wanted to talk to you about, so how does that improve the system? You know, I mean, if we're still allowing people to take advantage of uh, uh, of the current system, how does that improve? you know, improve anything. So we'll we'll talk about that when we get back. Sounds good.
Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and a fascinating conversation regarding a system that uh, is being proposed in the Hawaii State Legislature to publicly finance elections. And I guess the, I, I, I'm such a techie and I apologize for this, you know, a, a technician, political technician, junkie actually, because I, I like to get into the weeds, you know, but my understanding is this bill will not exclude somebody from running who decides to raise their own money. Correct. So one of the, what are the advantage of doing this outside of maybe giving some people who don't have the ability to leg up? Uh, what are the advantages to uh, uh, to passing such a law? Well, I'm glad you asked. And and the reality is, is um, you've seen, again, like I said, both Maine and Connecticut have these programs in place and they've been very successful and very effective. Uh, Connecticut established their program after they had uh, experienced a large corruption scandal in their state as well. And the benefit is, is you allow candidates at least the opportunity to pick a different route. Over 70% of the main legislature, uh, Democratic legislators pick the publicly financed election route. And so what happens is you have a ton of legislators in the building who are not beholden to their private donors. They're not responding to the needs and whims of these wealthy individuals or PACs or whatever the case might be. They recognize that they're getting their campaign funds from the state, which is a reaction of their support within their constituents, right? So um, although, and that's that's the point of why making sure that the candidates who participate in their program have enough money to win. We're not just trying to, um, you know, yell at those folks who participate in a private program we need to make it enticing for them we want to make it the better easier route to win is through this system so that they're no longer required to go and beg for money from these private folks well but let's talk about that for a little bit because you know i i i agree with you that uh, wholeheartedly that we we unfortunately have gotten to the state situation where all, all too often money seems to dominate the, the political conversation. Uh, you know, I remember when I was first starting out in politics, we would have a fundraiser and keep it as cheap as possible because the idea was to get as many people in the room as possible. And, and whereas today, unfortunately, my sense is that what you want is, uh, you know, few people giving large amounts of money uh, because it's a lot easier and a lot less expensive and, you know, for, for all the all the various reasons. So it seems like money has become much more important. So I agree with the concept, but I have a hard time getting past the idea that there's a, a escape plot in the system. For example, um, will the, what impact, in, in based on your research and, and, and across the country, uh, has uh, the idea of publicly financing elections have regarding the PACs that has seemed to, that are in many respects a totally unregulated uh, money coming into elections. So how does all of that fit together. Do you, do you have any idea? Yeah, so uh, I don't know all of the intimate, intimate details regarding the PAC influence. Um, a lot of these are just the direct one-on-ones, uh, right? The candidate contributions. Um, if PACs are out there spending money independently, which is what they have to do, it has to be independent. You know, this bill doesn't specifically address that. Um, currently, uh, you know, fortunately we don't have, um, you know, there are there is PAC influence, and obviously that can and should be addressed. This is not a you know silver bullet for everything, uh, but the reality is is the, the PACs currently in Hawaii aren't uh, overwhelming the candidate system as is. Um, almost all of the campaign expenditures come from candidate committees, which is what this is, right? So um, you know 
hopefully, like we've seen in Maine and Connecticut, this will be a good push and you'll see a lot more diversity of candidates, a lot of candidates coming from different backgrounds who otherwise couldn't run. Um, and then we'll see a lot better results in the legislature. If the super PAC situation, you know, continues or, or sorry, begins to be a, a big issue, obviously we can try to take some steps to address that then. Uh, but this is absolutely step one, um, dealing with the at least in, initial private donor issue that's dominating the system now. And have you, um, I, I'm assuming that you've taken some, done some kind of research or at least knowing uh, the Senator, uh, the Judiciary Chairman in, uh, Rhodes, Senator Rhodes, he's, he's the kind of research oriented type guy. So I'm sure he looked at, if he was going to introduce the bill, he looked at a lot of alternatives. So. Um, Tell us a little bit about what's happening across the country. Is this a direction that states are going to? Or, uh, I, you know, all I, the, the last four years of conversation about elections has to do with people's stealing elections mm -hmm. and the rest of that garbage, frankly. But uh, I haven't heard much conversation on public financing. So is this something that taking hold of it. Besides yeah. Connecticut and Maine and Hawaii with its half-baked half, uh, system, uh, who else is doing this? Yeah, this is this is growing in, in um, many different places. So Seattle has a system where um, voters, uh, residents, are given uh, $100 vouchers that they can use to give to candidates uh, to get them to. Uh, so the candidate can get as much money as he can get people to give him their voucher. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and that is another system that we had kind of looked at. But the unfortunate reality is the number of people that participate is still really low. Uh, there are not many residents actually give out their vouchers. And so the campaign finance system is still dominated by private donors that are helping fund these candidates. So it is a open opportunity, but it's really not as effective as the systems that are in Maine or Connecticut. And the Supreme Court has decisively ruled that you can't restrict, uh, you can, even with public financing, you can't restrict uh, people from raising their own, own sources of money. Exactly. People always have to be able to raise their own source of money. Uh, you can put some limits on it, right? Like each state has its own donation limit. Some I think are as low as like a hundred or two hundred dollars per donation. Ours is a little higher. I think it's you know two thousand dollars for a house candidate, for example. So we could set those thresholds lower if we really wanted to as well, which could could help clean things up too. Uh, but then also um, in other areas, New York has a, a one to eight matching program for small dollar donations. So similar to our one to one match, um, our current one to one match, they have a one to eight match. Um, and I know the um, U.S. representatives, the Democrats, I think House Bill one a few years ago was focusing on increasing the matching program for federal elections, too. So it's getting a lot of steam. And that was their like primary bill. Um, but unfortunately, kind of like I had said, is Connecticut and Maine and hopefully now Hawaii soon will uh, you know be the leads on this. And I, I think I failed to mention that we actually had this program in place on Hawaii County, county council elections um, used this program in 2010 and 2012. So um, it's really, not, and what was the, the what was the amount of the match? Uh, so again, it was a full full um, public financing, and so I think the formula was that they estimated or they took the average of the winner in that district over the previous two or three election cycles, and that was the amount that they were eligible to to receive. So for some districts, there was like a low. They, like the races were uncontested. So I think people were getting maybe 20 or 30K and other races, it was a little more. Um, so it wasn't just a flat number, but um, it was very effective. And um, actually I think um, uh, some of the current representatives uh, won their first race using this program. You mean you're talking about the council district races or? The... Exactly. Wow, that's good news. I mean, that's news to me. I didn't realize that, I, you know, and uh, huh. Well, let me, you know, just, we, we got a few more minutes left. And as I said, you know, as a kind of a 
kinds of a, of a, a political junkie. I get right into the uh, get, got right into the sort of the meat of the matter. But tell us, you know, in the, in the couple minutes that we have left, tell us why this is necessary. What what would be the good that would come to Hawaii if we uh, we pass the the bill that you're advocating for that Senator Rhodes is uh, going to introduce and by the way are we introducing it in the house as well yes yeah, so we're still trying to figure out um who is going to introduce it in the house uh, but it will be introduced there as well um so uh, we do have some time but the good that would come out of this would be enormous right um as we've said already the money influence on our elections is way too big right we do not want our legislators our council members our mayors our governors thinking about their donors when they're making decisions. And the current system requires it. I mean, I'd like to think of myself as a stand-up citizen, but if I had people paying my bills, keeping me in my job, I would absolutely think about them every time I acted, right? Um, and we don't want that. We want to free them from this system, the system that requires them to uh, get private donors. If we pass this clean elections bill, we would have our legislators being considered concerned about what their constituents are saying, could be concerned about how, what would make their district a better district, what laws they could pass, what actions they could take to help the people without worrying about what the big money is saying. So this would help get money out of politics, give the power back to the people and create a huge number of more diverse candidates that really represent the interests of Hawaii. Well, I'm fascinated by the idea of having 100 people give $5, so, you know, because you really brought that home to the basic, uh, you know, constituent. Because anybody, uh, well, not anybody, but almost everybody could give $5, you know. That. Right. So, yeah, then it, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, that's the point. We really want to empower local residents. We don't want this to be a hurdle, right? People want to participate in their elections, but um, when there's this big hurdle and this big, big money, how can you compete? So empowering the local residents to have a say and um, really get the candidates out there working with the constituents is absolutely the goal. So, by the way, you had a website that you put up uh, or, or we're going to show sometime. Tell us a little bit about the organization that is, if you want more information, ourhawaii.org. Yeah, Our Hawaii is uh, one of these uh, advocacy groups here that's really uh, focused on trying to get money out of politics. Um, they have other issues that they're focused on too, but this is definitely a primary one. And so if people want more information, they can go here um, and really participate and get involved, uh, right? Figure out how to call your legislate call your legislator, call your representative, senator, and find out more about, about this program. Well, Nate, I want to thank you so much for uh, agreeing to be with us and good luck. I, I hope that uh, I hope that the legislature really seriously considers and, and passes some kind of uh, campaign financing reform. So congratulations for taking up uh, taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and getting this issue moved. Thanks, Nate. Aloha. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.